So everybody, it looks like Apple's M2 MacBook Air, which I think is Apple's best MacBook, is about to get a whole lot better. Let's talk about it. So back in July of 2022, Apple released their M2 MacBook Air, which was their first computer to actually have the M2 chip. And the M2 MacBook Air brought a whole new redesign from a visual standpoint. It started to follow the new aesthetic that Apple adopted for the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros, which is a more kind of leveled off design, a little bit boxier, a little bit thicker, even though the MacBook Air did stay extremely thin. They replaced that wedge design that Apple has been known to have with the MacBook Air since 2008. Even though they kept it around with the M1 MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air is now fully level across the board. It no longer has that wedge design. But with that new design came the addition of the new MagSafe capability, so freeing up one of those extra Thunderbolt ports. They kept the headphone jack on the right-hand side. The keyboard stayed magnificent. The trackpad was amazing. But the actual design language just looks, in my opinion, a little bit better. Now, again, that's purely a preference thing. Like, I love the Midnight Blue colorway which is only in the M2 MacBook Air. For some reason the MacBook Pros don't even have that but again the midnight version in that boxier design with the 13.6 inch display that did house a new little notch. I'm a huge huge fan of it and I use it as kind of my throw around computer on a daily basis. But right as the M2 MacBook Air did release people started to already kind of talk about maybe having a larger version of this M2 Air because the M2 Air in its own right is powerful enough to take on 99% of tasks, whether it is something as simple as emailing or doing Slack messages, maybe running some Microsoft Teams meetings, you know, running in the Microsoft suite of products or in the Apple suite of products. It can handle all that and then some, including some creativity work, if you kind of keep it on the minimal side and you don't go crazy with it. The M2 MacBook Air in its own right is an amazing computer. It handles anything that you could really throw at it because of the M2 chip. And then with that came the idea of some buyers wanting a larger screen MacBook because they didn't need the power or the beefiness or the, I guess the weight and size of that 16 inch MacBook Pro and they also don't want that price tag of at least $2,500. So in comes this idea of having a 15 inch MacBook Air which maybe is two, three, maybe $400 more expensive but can give you much more screen real estate to have a bunch of windows open whether that is maybe an email, a Google Doc, you know a Slack, Twitter, things of that nature. And now we're getting reports from Ross Young that the production schedule of a 15 inch MacBook Air Air, an M2 MacBook Air has finally begun, which could give us an idea that we should be getting a 15.5 inch M2 MacBook Air releasing in April of this year. So far, what we know about this 15 inch MacBook Air is that, again, it will be pretty much a carbon copy of the 13.6 inch M2 MacBook Air. So they'll keep the same design language, the same colorways, the same screen technology, the same keyboard, the same trackpad, probably the same speaker system, the same internals. So think the same baseline versions of eight gigs of RAM with the M2 chip and 256 gigs of storage, the same eight core CPU and 10 core GPU. They might do a 10 core CPU because they did a 10 core CPU with the M2 Mac mini, but the baseline version of the M2 Air has an 8-core CPU and then a 10-core GPU. So think of that when they're talking about a 15-inch version, but the only difference going from the 13 to the 15 is going to be the screen real estate and the actual footprint of the design. And again, the reason we think this is because Ross Young did confirm that Apple did begin panel production recently, which could line up to a spring event release date or at least a spring event announcement and then release in April. And this isn't the first time that Apple has had two different MacBook Airs in their lineup. When Apple first released their MacBook Air a couple years later, they released an 11 inch MacBook Air, which we actually still have in our house. It still works perfectly fine. It's a small little compact 11 inch MacBook Air that's identical to the 13 inch MacBook Air at least the old version of that 13 inch MacBook Air. So it does make sense for Apple to have two different MacBook Airs in their lineup. One thing that I'm curious to know is A, what they're gonna do with the M2 MacBook Pro, the one that didn't change at all from a design standpoint that still has the old design language. Like what is that gonna do in the lineup now moving forward and what price point is it gonna be at? Will Apple continue to sell that one? I'm not 100% sure. And then another thing that I wanna know is what is this going to cost the consumer? Because right now for $1199, you can get and the baseline M2 MacBook Air. If you go through the education store, you can get it for $1099. So what is that price point? Is it another $200, another $300? Because, because in terms of feature sets, what are we probably gonna get with this M2 MacBook Air? It'll probably be updated from an internal standpoint of yes, it's still gonna have the M2 chip, but it'll probably have Bluetooth 5.3, it'll have Wi-Fi 6E, and all the other stuff that came with the Mac mini upgrade that the M2 MacBook Air currently does not have. And then also, we're going to get a bigger battery because there's going to be more space in the chassis to fit a battery and obviously the bigger screen. So what is that going to cost the consumer? In my opinion, I think it's going to go up to about $14.99, maybe even $15.99 for a base model. But then at that point, can you still get away with only giving 256 gigs of storage? 
maybe the baseline version is a 1599 version with 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and then all the upgraded internals, like I mentioned earlier, then it would be a little bit less cost prohibitive because if you are spending $1,500, $1,600, you better get more than 256 gigs of storage. I'm personally extremely excited about this idea because I use my MacBook Air kind of the way that most people use their iPad. My MacBook Air is a throw around computer that gets passed around throughout everybody in the family, that gets used to surf the web randomly. And you know, I use it as my Slack machine, as my email machine and things like that. So being able to have that on a bigger footprint with a larger screen where it still stays extremely portable, that is the key. Because A, the portability of the MacBook Air is much, much better than the portability of the, of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros because of how slim and slender it is and how light it is. So bringing that into a larger form factor while staying light, staying slim, staying portable is going to be a big time seller for Apple. And I think a lot of people are going to gravitate towards that because right now some consumers want that larger screen, but they don't want to pay that premium of $2,500 and up to get the 16 inch MacBook Pro because they don't need all that power. They just want a machine that can email, that can run Slack, you know, that can watch a couple videos, listen to music, work inside of Google Docs or the Microsoft Office Suite, but have enough screen real estate to have three or four applications open comfortably versus right now with a 13 inch one, if you're just purely using the onboard screen, then there isn't enough space to have more than maybe two max, three applications open running at the same time because it just gets a little bit too cluttered in my personal opinion. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Leave a comment down below. Is a 15 inch MacBook Air something that you wanna see or is it something that maybe not a lot of people will be buying? What are your comments and concerns about a 15 inch MacBook Air? Do you think maybe it'll be too fragile from a thinness standpoint because it's gonna get a bigger footprint? Maybe it'll bend easier, things of that nature. I'm curious to know what you guys think and whether or not you'll be purchasing a 15 inch MacBook Air. And what do you think is that sweet spot in terms of price to performance ratio on a 15 inch MacBook Air? But that's going to do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. I'll also leave a link to the article that Chance wrote about this 15-inch MacBook Air down in the description. So definitely check that out. But if you guys want to watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Stay subscribed because we have some more M2 Mac Mini stuff coming real soon.